Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Well, we have the HP laptop out, and I'm going to teach you guys how to get a super drive from Apple to work on your PC. A lot of Mac people also have Windows computers in their houses as well. We do like to run the real McCoy of each. Oh wait, we still do anyways, even on a Mac, so whatever. Point is, when we run Windows on a Macintosh computer, we do have to install the Boot Camp PC drivers after we do the Windows 10 install. It's all in PC format after all, and we need to make sure that Windows knows that all these drivers are to make all of our Mac hardware run with it. Well, in the case of an actual PC, when you plug in a super drive, what happens is it shows an icon, but we got no juice. Okay, so it's kind of like, is there something wrong with my ROM? It just worked five minutes ago. It's electronic. It can blow up anytime. No, don't panic. Okay. Unless it actually is blown. Anyhow, so I will provide the links in the video description below where I where I got the files from. And what you need is the Apple ODD install 64 if you're running the 64-bit version of Windows 10, either on your Mac, obviously. Um, but you would get that automatically when you did download that. It's part of Boot Camp. Uh, but on a Windows PC, of course, you have to go to the Apple website download the boot camp USB install open up that zipped file go into the drivers for the Apple drivers and grab this for the ODD that is your CD driver okay for Windows so pretty simple double click the file say yes now if you're running the 32-bit version of Windows okay then you will need the 32-bit installer, which is the one to the left of the boot camp um, on the right. Okay, so you need the older version of the boot camp USB installer is the, the point. So look at the version numbers. The bigger number, that's the newest, that's for Windows 1064. The older one is obviously for the 32-bit version of Windows 10. And we just follow the prompts and do as we're requested. Yes, and follow the little yellow brick road and let it install. So I've already tested this and I know it works perfect, but I wanted to do this from scratch with you guys so that you know that it A, actually does work and B, step by step on how to do this right. So, device is now updated. We say finish. Now, it did not request us to update the computer by restarting, but we're going to restart anyways, and this is going to probably take a minute or two because no matter what, it's going to recalibrate and reset everything up so that our ROM is now going to work, which is the whole idea. And I just heard the CD-ROM getting activated, so I know that Hmm, the bus seems to be active. There it goes again. So this is going to take a minute. Now we're at the desktop. And you're not allowed to see my password, so night night for a second. Okay. Okay, now we're back up. Now we'll go to this PC. We'll see that the CD-ROM icon has now changed. Looks kind of cool. So let's throw in our CD. Now it's scanning the CD. And voila. That's it. We're done. We now have an Apple Super Drive working on an actual Windows computer. And this will work with, with any Windows computer. Okay, as long as you're running Windows 10, either 32 bit or 64 bit, then you're good to go to put your Apple Super Drive on without any issues. Okay, close it off. Now, here's the thing. This is a slot load ROM, okay? So, being that that's a slot load, we have no buttons for eject. 
So we just go here, we right click, right, right click, and we select eject. And we get our CD back, okay? The reason I'm putting a super drive onto my PC is I do have the ASUS one that I bought from one of the pawn shops about a couple weeks ago, and I needed something for myself instead of sharing with my wife's ROM, right? Saves wear and tear too. But I needed something for my 2007 iMac because its internal ROM blew. And of course it had to be removed, otherwise the computer won't boot anymore until you remove it. So, anyways, I thought I got a ROM, I could always share between the Mac and the PC, but I don't like to share, okay? I like to have things complete. I'm a very OCD person that way. I'm very picky. So, I thought, well, I just bought this for 25 bucks from the Hawk Shop, and it will not work on my 2007 iMac. Apparently, the 2007 iMac is not compatible with the Apple external super drive, but it is compatible with any of the third-party Mac PC compatible CD burners, right? But with this burner, nada. Don't know why. I've never seen this ever happen before in my life until now. So, I thought, okay, I need to make use of this drive because I have the same super drive sitting on my, my big iMac, right? Because it doesn't have an internal. So, uh, I thought, well, I could use it on the PC. Works for me. And I have one in my big tower, so voila. So, anyway, I did some research and found out how to make this happen. And uh, it only made sense because all the files from the boot camp loader uh, USB stick are all PC EXE files. And you have to install them to Windows 10 so that the Windows environment recognizes all your Mac hardware so that it can all work. And that includes if you have an internal ROM, external ROM, doesn't matter. Um, your video card properly, your uh, your mouse, your Bluetooth stuff, all that jazz, your Wi-Fi, all has to be set up. But you just need one file, and that's the Apple ODD file here, which is the installer for 64-bit, because I'm using the 64-bit version of Windows 10 on this computer. But if you have the 32-bit version, then you need to grab the older boot camp uh, file installer, so I'll throw the link up to Apple's website for that as well. And then you'll be able to do this on your PCs. So if you are a Mac person with PCs and you know you don't want to go out and buy another drive just to have one, there's no need to. You just use your, your actual Apple Super Drive and you download a file that costs you nothing. Right? So anyway. So now we can take this file and we can throw it in the trash and delete it because now we're done with it. Now my computer is set up. So now when I unplug it and we go back to this PC, it's gone. We plug it back in. And it should fire right back up. That's interesting that it didn't show the icon. Now I tested before that this worked, but I didn't see this happening before. That's interesting. But there it is. It does come back up. So uh, I guess if it doesn't show back up when you've disconnected and reconnected, don't panic. Just throw your CD in and away you go. So now we eject it. Let's try a different port. Activate the ROM. So I guess it has a little bug to it, but it still takes the ROM. Should still mount it. That is something interesting because that was never mentioned in the info I found about doing this. And it's there. Okay, so it's gonna 
So that's one little bug to doing this on an actual real Windows computer. You won't find this bug when you're doing this on an actual uh, Mac computer or a Mac laptop. It's kind of like it just functions as normal. Um, so I don't know why we have this little bug, but it doesn't matter because it's actually still working just fine. You know, we eject it. It knows it's still there. We unplug. We switch to a different port. It knows that something's been plugged in. It doesn't show the icon. I guess maybe because it is a super drive, it's not a regular PC drive, maybe that's the thing. And you have to actually just throw your CD in first and then it scans it and throws it on. Kind of like how the Mac works, because the Mac doesn't actually show your CD-ROM icon all the time. And when you eject the disc, everything disappears. So it's acting the exact same way, except in this case on a Windows 10 computer that is straight out Windows, right? So that's probably what it is. Um, so it's nothing to worry about. Anyways, that's what I got for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, a little tutorial on how to do all this and that it can be done and does work. Um, if there are any skeptics in the room at all, ha ha ha. This is an authentic Apple ROM. Just so that you know, this is the real McCoy. This isn't one of those clones that are out there on the market. This is the real deal, okay? So, you'll know that from the Apple logo and the writing below. Anyways, that's it. That's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more stuff. I got some more techie things going to be going on in the next little bit, so stay tuned to the channel for that too. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. Smash the bell for notifications for updates. And uh, hey, we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.